Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the online user group. Everything else, Jonas back office. I, uh, the, your phones are currently muted, so you should be able to hear me, uh, but you won't be able to hear each other. Uh, if you have any questions as we're going through, just use the chat function to post a message. If it is bearing on what we're currently talking about, I will answer it right away. Uh, if not, I may defer it to the end of the session where we will have a, a question and answer. Um, someone asked about, will we be able to listen without calling in? No, you need to connect to the conference call in order to, to hear. Unless you're hearing me already, in which case you're fine. Okay, so who did what, when, and where? So we've added quite a few edit logs. And majority, not all, but a majority of all changes made to any master file are recorded in one of our edit logs. We've got them placed throughout the system. Uh, key is the administration report user event log. This was our only edit log to begin with. Um, it was somewhat limited because it didn't track every single change. It was what kind of what we consider important changes. Uh, we've now expanded that into multiple edit logs, basically one for each, each component on the system. Um, so under administration, there's a new option called edit logs and it breaks it down by each of the modules. There's also under each setup place, like under member setup, vendor setup, point of sale items, uh, point of sale categories, there's also edit logs there as well. The one under administration is where you can access all of them from one spot. Uh, hotel management, has reservations, edit in-house guest, has a view changes. One. That one doesn't have a global report. You basically have to go into the actual reservation or guest to see those changes. So under administration, you should have a function called edit logs and then each module and then within that module, the different options for it. When you're running the edit log, you basically have the ability to filter whatever you want. You can say, look at everything, or you can pick a date range or a specific date, and you can search for something if you wanted to. Um, just one second here. Um, I have someone asking a question. Um, Yes, you should be able to see my screen where I've got a slide up for it uh, showing who did what, when, where, edit log. You may have to disconnect from the session and back in again. It may not have loaded properly for you. Okay, so uploads and downloads. We've always had the ability to download to Excel, for instance, and other things, but we've now actually tried to add in some upload functionalities as well. Um, downloads allow you to be able, obviously, custom reports outside of Jonas. Um, and we're adding more uploads to make it easier for you to be able to process large transactions or large things without having to manually input. Because, of course, as soon as you manually re-input, there's a danger that something is going to be punched in incorrectly. So you may have noticed in some of yours that you see a new button called Export. The export is new for dumping it out to Excel. You still have the ability to click Print and pick Smart Viewer which pushes things out to Excel for you. The export is slightly different. 
Uh, two main things is the export allows you to give it more specifics, to tell it this is the workbook I want you to go to and this is the actual tab on that workbook that I want you to go into. You actually have a columns function as well where you can dictate the column information that you want. The other thing that's the big difference between Smart Viewer and Export is if you've used Smart Viewer before, you'll realize that when it dumps it into Excel, it's actually not an Excel sheet. It's actually something called HTML. You can always resave it as an Excel document, but that's an extra step. So the export is a true export to Excel. So basically when it pushes it out to this report or that workbook into that tab, it will be in Excel format at that point. So when you're doing that, as well as telling it the workbook and the tab, you can also tell it which headings to include on the report. And then what will happen when it does send it out to that tab? Do you want it to sort or don't sort? And do you want it to open Excel automatically? So from the upload standpoint, you have the ability to upload for charging or for setups. Now, one of the key places where we have that new upload for setups is actually under the membership file or the fee schedules. So in the fee schedules, we have an assign members function. Now, basically, prior versions we used to, when a club was going into Jonas, we would upload all their fee schedules and assign them to the members from the beginning when they went live. After that, they had to maintain it manually, which meant if they had a new fee schedule, they would then have to go into each member and add that fee schedule in. We've now given you the ability to actually do that a lot more seamlessly. So basically you have, you create the fee schedule and then you can click assign members. And when you click assign members, you can basically come in here and manually tell it which members you want this attached to, or you can import it from Excel. So when you're importing from Excel, it'll just populate this with the information on the spreadsheet and then you just click update, which then will populate to those members. So a very quick way to do setups without having to go into every single member. Charging, again, we've added in some functionality for that. For instance, in their, their credit books, add credits to credit book. Uh, you always could do that manually by plugging in the member number and then how much you wanted to add to the credit book. Um, but now we've given you the ability again to import it from an Excel spreadsheet. So if you have a spreadsheet with a bunch of credits, say from a tournament or something that you want to add to the members, rather than having to do it one at a time, which of course opens it up for uh, an error and typing in the wrong member or wrong amount, you can actually import it right from Excel. It'll populate it in, and then you can still preview it before posting it to the members' accounts. For you folks on 12.5 and higher, you may have noticed uh, this view on the right-hand side of the screen. Now, that view to the right, you have favorites, which is sort of like the bookmarks function where you could add them to your favorites. Info is basically just giving you the, the stuff you used to see at the very bottom of the screen, what version you're on, what the terminal ID is, that type of thing. But then the news one is basically a news feed that'll show you some, some Jonas advertising, for lack of a better term. But then you've got these icons at the very top. 
and these are important okay so this newspaper icon will take you to our news feed to see it and this film one will basically take you to our video website we have multiple videos that we're putting up there they're very short videos they have to do with specifics like month-end processing uh, how to run an end-of-day report, how to do an inventory count, how to set up an item, how to split a ticket, that type of thing. So we try and be very specific. They're usually no longer than 15-20 minutes, sometimes less, depending on what we're covering. These are free, they're available to anyone, just have to log into the website. There is a place to submit uh, videos that you would like. We're doing the videos as go. If people request a specific one, they will allow to see get priority and we'll do it sooner. You can also get into the webinars. Now the webinars are similar to what we're doing today. They're basically a web-based thing that takes about an hour where we cover a specific topic. Again, it's not basically for someone brand new to the system. It's meant for like how to handle event management. Uh, reporting, um, inventory counts, that type of thing. And these are free. They take about an hour, as I said. You just click the register button and you can register on your site as many as you like to participate. But it's basically just a web-based session where we'll go through that particular topic. And the newspaper one brings you into our news feed, which just highlights some of the key things that have changed or been added or is happening on the Jonas side. Now let's talk about accounts payable. Uh, some folks may not be using this as yet, uh, but you may have noticed under the vendor setup, there's a little flag in there that now says payment account. Now that payment account is used for a specific thing. And that is, if you have a corporate credit card, one of the problems used to be that if I had a Visa card, a club Visa card, and someone goes out and uses that to buy products at, uh, let's say the local grocery store, uh, say at a Lowe's or something, and then they come back, I need to record that invoice against the Visa card because that's who I'm cutting the check for to pay it out which meant I lost the ability to report on how much did we spend or purchase from Lowe's over the course of the year. This payment account handles that for you. In that same scenario, what would happen is when you come back from the store, you could actually enter that Lowe's invoice against the Lowe's supplier. But then at the end of the month or end of the week, whenever you want to, you can actually transfer those invoices from those vendors into the credit card account. So on the vendor, I still have the invoice and the record, so I can report on it, but it'll show paid by credit card, and then the credit card account has the outstanding invoice, which is where I'm cutting the check. Now, depending on what version you're on, um, the flag is in the bottom right, and some of them, it's it's in a uh, subscreen, which I believe is the page two. Um, from the accounts payable standpoint, you can actually tie a vendor or a batch against a specific payment account. When you do this lookup, you will not see all the vendors, only those that have been flagged as a payment account. The accounts payable report generator has been refined so it's now closer to the club report generator in its layout. So again, you can drag from the folder listing on the left 
and drop, or you can click on that lookup under the data row and find it from the old fashioned list. Under System Administration Utilities, we've actually added a reverse audit trails. So now in one central menu, they used to be spread throughout the system, but now it's in one place. Chip processing, we're referring here not to point of sale, but to the club chip processing. Minimum billing, deferred revenue posting, and late fee or interest posting. You also can set up so that your financial reports can basically come out in a much nicer format. One of the things that some of the clients don't like is when you print a report, just about all of the reports from Jonas, we use courier font so that things line up properly. Uh, just a bit of laziness, I guess. So basically that's always been a, not a problem for internal reports like my age payables, age receivables. We're only looking at it in house, and that's fine. But when it comes to the financial statements, Normally, we want to look a bit more professional, more. And so you actually can do that. By default, when you print them, it's going to go to courier. But you actually can set up a printer style that we can tell it to use different fonts for the system. So this is under system administration, system setup. There's something called printer styles. So you can create a printer style called uh, FS for financial statements or like we have here nice the key is you need to make sure that it's flagged as a GUI graphic user interface type once you have that set you can then click on prefs on the right hand side and when you click on prefs you will actually get this screen that allows you to basically dictate how it's going to print so I can change the fonts for each component I can have a different font for the title, for the column headings, for the subheadings, for the actual text, for the trailers. You can bold, underline, italicize. If you're printing to a color printer, you actually can get it to print in color as well. And you can force it to always print portrait or landscape as well, which for a financial statement sometimes is a key one. Now the key with this is you need to make sure that when you go to print the financial statements, you look at the printer style box and make sure it's set to this nice or FS or whatever you call it. Now this is a relatively new function as well. I think it was in 12.4 it was added in. So it used to be that if you purchased a new module from Jonas, we would have to send you a new CD and then you'd have to kick everyone off the system, install that CD and rebuild everything so that your new version was added. So there's a bit of a time lag waiting for that CD to show up. You can now do it completely online. So basically what will happen is if you purchase a new module, you will get an email from us with directions on how to do this. But effectively, all you do is you don't need the physical CD. You just come into system administration and you're going to click on software key renewals and then you click get current product keys and it goes to our website and pulls down your list of modules and what you're allowed to get then you can download the version upgrade it's got to be the upgrade not the update you still have to get everyone out of the system but then when you run this it'll add that module into your system So you can pay a member who has a credit balance directly from the membership side. This was always a bit tricky because in the old days you used to have to post something on the membership side to reduce their, 
to get rid of that credit balance, then go into AP and cut a check to refund that member. We now have given you the ability to do that directly right from the membership side. Uh, there's a lot of setup involved in activating this, so this is something if you're not using and you want to use, you should contact Jonas Support so we can walk you through it. There are settings, for instance, under the users that dictate whether or not they're allowed to use this function, uh, and there are certain setup requirements. So, first of all, you check design. If you're using a custom check design, Again, we'd have to check to make sure it's able to handle a miscellaneous supplier. This will not feed to the 1099 because we're bypassing the AP vendor setup. So if you do require a 1099 to be generated for these payments, then you'll have to do it the old fashioned way through accounts payable. Now, if you're not using the miscellaneous supplier in accounts payable, the idea is you, you have to have a vendor set up with a code MISC, and you can call it a miscellaneous supplier. The idea behind that, ignoring this functionality from, from Club, is I want to record a one-off check uh, for a vendor, uh, so I don't really need it to track. I don't want to set up the vendor in order to cut a check. So you can have a miscellaneous supplier. And the idea is you can use quick checks and you link it to the miscellaneous supplier and it actually comes up and asks you what name and address you want to print on the physical check. So it can be handy for that type of thing. So you need to create that as well for this to work. Under the basic club profile, again, there's a setting that links it to the AP so it knows where to get the check information and that type of thing. And then under club management, there's a setting for member checks as well. So basically under the member account inquiry, if they have a credit balance and you want to issue this, you basically have a print check in the bottom right here. And so if you click that, it will effectively launch through to the miscellaneous supplier where it basically comes up and asks you what do you want to show or print on the physical check. The locker system, not just for lockers. You can use the locker system for a database of anything um, for empty lockers. So you can effectively, uh, some clubs don't do this. They do their billing directly through club management fee schedules because they prefer to have all the billing in one spot. And so you can bill from the locker system and you can basically tell it don't show it as locker number. So basically you can call it anything you like for the statement billing. Again, most clubs aren't using this for that. The locker system is used strictly to track, but you could use it for billing on that. Communication tracking. This was added in and basically the idea behind the member communication tracking is it's a place that allows you to keep notes about membership or a member uh, and you can also set up tasks in there. Uh, the other part of this is these tasks can be assigned to users within Jonas. And if you're using Outlook and have the user's emails set up on, on Jonas, you can actually trigger it to send emails for the tasks that you've assigned. So 
So this becomes a log file listing all the different communications and tasks that have been set up and logged against this member. So a lot of clubs use this uh, for notes, for instance, to be able to track, well, this person got a leave of absence from this date to this date, or there was a dispute about their invoice and we ended up voiding it. So they can enter that and basically make notes about it. And that stays with this member. And you can report on it, obviously, as well. So if this member comes in for a meeting or something or comes up for renewal, I can go back and look at their history. The other thing we're using this for, or clubs are using this for, is also for tracking uh, any issues. So they'll give, for instance, the department heads access to set up communications for a member. You can give managers access to set up communications uh, tasks without giving them access to the member database. There is a member or a menu function for this. So they, if someone had an issue with their dinner or their tea time uh, on a Saturday, someone could go in and log that and they could actually assign it to a specific set of users in Jonas and set a date when it needs to be done. And again, if you're using Outlook, you can trigger it to send it to Outlook. So it would actually, I assign it to Jim. Jim would actually get an email with the note of what the issue was. Plus, he'd get an attachment that allowed him to add it to his calendar and his tasks in Outlook. You can also have it, when you set up that task, that you get emailed back when Jim flags it as completed. So you know that he's looked after it. And there is full tracking on that. So you're able to go back through and run reports for all things, or managers can run it for what's been assigned to them each morning and see what's been assigned. So daily deposit list, there is under the club management uh, cash receipts module, uh, menu, there is an option there for deposit slips. So this will allow you to print off for a specific date all the deposits or basically payments that were run through cash receipts and club management. And as it says here, some banks will accept this as an actual deposit slip. You can use that as well. If they accept it, otherwise clubs will tend to use this as a reporting tool. So end of each day, they will actually run this report and submit it to the accountant so we can see exactly what was processed payment wise for that day. You always want to take the Jonas standard. The other ones listed there are customized for specific clients. So you may not get uh, the required results. You may not have the right setup. So slips for which date? Do you want to print the name or the check number? Now this flag is a bit dangerous. Purge deposit slips up to. That means you're going to wipe them. So if I flag that for this April 2nd, it means I will never be able to run the April 2nd deposit slip again. You can also set up your system so that when I receive or post that payment from the member, that it automatically sends that member an email to confirm that the payment's been received and posted. It works for fast cash entry or integrated and will also work with the pre-authorized payments, the ACH or the credit card processor. Uh, yes, it can be used for the fast cash receipts. Members can opt in or out. There's a flag right in the email setup, which I'll show you in a second. You obviously would need to set up the email, body of the email, that the member is going to get to say we've processed a payment. Basically, under the member record, 
there's a little flag or next to the email there's a little button that has an envelope with a plus sign in it and if you click that this screen will come up where you can set multiple emails there is a column here that says payment so if that's flagged for instance in this case this member when I post a payment cash receipts ACH integrated it will send Nancy an email to confirm that that payment's been processed. Member tracking. So there is a member tracking report that's kind of buried. It's in their club management reports uh, membership reporting and it's called member track count and track report so it will give you two sets of reports a count report or a tracking report the tracking report is equivalent we used to call it a ticking report which probably like most of you I used to have to do in Excel where these I had four members leave and switch to social two resign two new ones joined Jonas will now track that for you. So you can compare month to month, year to year, whatever you like. So it'll give you a count report, which is straightforward. You can do counts as of the current date for the last 12 months or the last five years. But the big one is the tracking report. So it's going to show you based on hey, what the change has been to your membership records. We've lost four of these, then two of these went up, that type of thing. So when you go into the tracking report, you're going to see all the different options. The top three are the counts. The bottom three are the tracking reports. So. There's also a function, and this is under the club profile where you activate it. If you have dependents set up, so if I'm the main member and my wife is set up as, say, I'm 123, she's 123A, and the kids are 123B, C, D, etc., it uh, doesn't necessarily have to be that coding, but effectively, if you have dependents in the member database linked back to the main account, uh, there is a flag that you should turn on in the club profile so that if you're changing the address on the main account it'll ask you if you want to change it on all the dependents as well just to save you having to change each one or worse you change the main one but don't change the sub ones you can also dictate what gets changed whether it changes all the address lines or just the ones you've edited whether you want to change the emails which normally you don't because I want each unique email in business address again normally I don't want to change that on each dependent because it's only the one I may have different I may have the spouse's business information as well as the main members information so once you turn that on when you make a change to the main members address line a box will pop up saying do you want to now update the dependents information and if you do that, it will go through and change the dependence based on the change you made on the main one. So those settings, remember, are under the club management profile under the options screen. And yeah, page two is where it is. So it's basically in the bottom left, there's a series of settings for it. The main one is this is the address change, and you can't see it, but below that, it'll ask for change email, change business information as well. We've also added in the ability to generate club invoices. Um, there's Again, it's a flag in that club profile that basically tells the system to activate invoicing. If you activate the invoicing, two things happen. Effectively, every time you do a billing, whether you're doing chip processing, record club invoices, uh, fee billing run, interest billing, whatever, 
you'll it'll run like it normally does, but then you'll get a message pop up saying, do you want to print invoices now? Well, if you wanted to print an invoice for every single member that was billed, you would say yes. Usually clubs aren't using the invoicing for that. They're using it more so for, for instance, corporate. A lot of corporations will not pay on statements. They must have an invoice. So in that scenario, when the message pops up, do you want to print invoices, you can say no. But from the account inquiry screen, you can always print on demand an invoice for any charge. You basically just go into account inquiry and you click the little blue box to the right and it will basically give you an option to print the invoice. Uh, you cannot affect the numbering on the invoice. We're generating that automatically. Reprint, it will re show as a reprint if you print it multiple times. And if you print it after it's been paid, it will show as paid in full. That's just a sample of a standard one for it. So under the club management, club profile, page two, there's a little flag that says enable invoicing. Now, if you're going to turn that on, you need to go to Club Administration, Forms Design, and then make sure you go to Club Invoices and tell it which design you want to use. That one you saw is our standard design, which you can use, or you can link it to a mail merge template. But then keep in mind, you'll have to go and make sure you create that mail merge invoice for it to work. Okay, so as I said, when you actually do a billing, whether it's uh, going or not, you're gonna get a message like this. Do you wanna print invoices now? Uh, you also can print them on demand. So you could just basically, uh, at the end of the month, go in and say, I wanna print invoices. And you can pick the journal that you wanna print them for. Now, this is the inquiry screen I was talking about. So when you pull up account inquiry and click on that little blue to the right, this would pop up and you'll see the invoice number. And if you click on it, it'll then allow you to print the invoice. Mandatory custom fields. So you actually can have the custom fields, which are the user-defined fields, can be set up as mandatory fields, which of course will force the user to always put something into that field. Uh, this is handy when, especially if you're setting up a new member and there's a certain piece of information that we're tracking in the custom fields, it's easy for someone to forget to go into that subscreen under the member file to set up that custom information. So we could flag it as a mandatory field, so they must go in there and set that up. Now to set that up, you need to go to where you set up the custom field. So under club setup, custom member information, this is where you're defining those fields. And what you do is on the field that you want to be mandatory, under additional information column, you put REQ apostrophe D. It needs to be exactly that in uppercase. That makes this field a mandatory field. You then need to go to, I believe it's the club profile. Yes, it is. Under club options, mandatory custom fields. So you need to make sure you activate both of those. If you only put in the required or only put this check mark on, it's not gonna work. You need to do both steps. Now, the next thing we're going to talk about is user access. So probably everyone is, is 
been used to setting up users in Jonas and quite often the user security is based on the menu access. So we say, don't show them this and this and this. So basically they don't even see that option on their menu. Uh, but for some reason I may want to give them, for instance, access to the member database, but I don't want them to be able to change anything. I don't want them to be able to go into fee billing or ACH information, for instance. Uh, but I want them to be able to pull up the member records so they can look up addresses, uh, contact information, whatever it is. So there's two ways you can do that. You can do it by button security or field security. So basically button security means I dictate which one of these options are available to that user. Field security says which fields on the screen are available for me. Now when you're setting this you have two options. I can dictate that they have view only function which in this example only have view only or I can say don't show the information. So I can actually suppress it so it would just be blank so they can't see it. So if I didn't want people to know their email I could suppress that completely. The button information is straightforward. They either have access to that button or they don't. This is done under the group security or the user admin setup. And there's a button on the right that says button security and field level security. So when you go in there, it'll ask you which module and which database effectively. And then this is actually, this screen is for the field level security. So I can basically just pull up the member file and say view only, which immediately strips off all the edit functions completely. But if you're going to that level, if you're giving them member database access, let's say, be careful of these, right? Make sure they're not allowed to add or delete anything. Now, this is where I can say, well, I don't want them to have access to, say, their phone number. I can take that view off, which means the field is just blank for them. Now, on the button security, same idea. You're basically dictating which buttons. It won't hide the buttons. It simply grays them out. So the person has no way of actually clicking on those buttons. This button security and field level security can be defined at user group level. So if you have user groups and you're uh, set up, you can do it there. If you're not, then you have to do it at each user ID level. Now that's it for presentation. Does anyone have any questions? Uh, it doesn't have to be about what we were just talking about. It can be anything. It's wide open. I'm going to leave the, the chat window open for a bit longer just in case folks are uh, talking amongst themselves about questions. Uh, but if you have no questions, that's it. Thank you for your time today.